And that's good. Build that security up in your life. But man, beware of the devils because they're there somewhere. They're there somewhere. I mean, this is kind of the story of, of Adam and Eve, isn't it? Speaking of gods. How many of you guys know the story of Adam and Eve? Out of curiosity. Yeah, it's, a, it's a deep story, man. It's not a simple story. Essentially, you've got the first person created, Adam. And this is fascinating, by the way. You've got Adam, and then he asks for a helpmate. So then God creates Eve. So now you've got these two. So does anybody know by any chance who the first person born was? His name was Cain. It was their first child. Does anybody know what he's famous for? Yeah, killing his brother. So the first human ever born, according to that religion, murdered their brother. So the first human ever who was born murdered somebody. That, there's, a, there's a reason for that, man. That tells us something deep about, about us as human beings. But in any event, the story of Adam and Eve goes that Eve is, is wandering through the garden one day, and God has you know, this perfect garden for, for the two of them, and tells him, you can eat of anything here except for this one tree, which is the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. And people oftentimes say, oh, it's the tree of knowledge. No, no, it's the tree of knowledge of good and evil. In other words, when you eat of that free, you're going to know what's good, and you're going to know what's evil. And so the serpent kind of shows up and asks Eve, so God said you can eat of anything here, huh? There's a lie. God didn't say that. God didn't say you can eat of anything here. He said you can eat of anything except for that one tree. And so Eve corrects him and says, uh, eat of anything except for that one tree. And then the snake goes, hmm. That, that, that attempt to create chaos out of order didn't work. Remember, the garden for a garden to be a garden, it's got to be perfect order. You got to have everything irrigated just right. The plants have to be just right. It, it's difficult to cultivate a garden, and so this garden is perfect. So it's a well-ordered place for them to live. And the serpent comes along to try to introduce chaos into that order. And then the serpent then asks, "Did God really say that, though?" Trying to again take order, take what exists, which is truth, and try to create disorder out of it by introducing lies and doubts. And then Eve says, yeah, he said that. And it's interesting in the story because you wonder, where's Adam? Adam's the one who asked for a helpmate. Why is he not there? Why is he not talking to the serpent himself? <laughs> Why is it that Eve is left out there by herself? And then finally he says, okay, yeah, he said it, but let me tell you why, though. Because on the day that you eat of that tree, you're going to know good from evil, and you're going to be just like God. So then asterisk. Not, you're not going to be him. You're going to be kind of like him in that one very small sliver, which is that you're going to know good from evil. In other words, you're going to know what chaos and order are. And so Eve is like, whoa, I'm going to be God? Uh, yeah, something like that. Yeah, go ahead, eat it. <laughs> so then she eats it, and all of a sudden she realizes, uh-oh, this is bad. And so what does she do? Okay. Try this. <laughs> and Adam's like, all right. So then he tries it because, you know, we're stupid. We do stuff like that. And then at that point, they realize, oh, man, we've made a big mistake. And they recognize that they're naked. Why? Why naked? Why does that matter? Because then they recognize their own vulnerability. Before that, they never realized that they were vulnerable because they didn't know evil. They only knew good. And so once they ate of this tree, now they knew that there was good in the world and there was evil in the world. And once you recognize that there's evil in the world and you're vulnerable, you recognize that you're vulnerable to the evil. And what's the evil that they were not aware of before? Love. What's that? Love. No. Mm-hmm. No. There was a serpent in the garden. Oh. It was, the garden was perfect except for there was a serpent in the garden. Do you know why I talk to you guys the way that I talk to you? Because there are serpents in the garden. That's why. Because I can sit here and tell you everything is beautiful and wonderful and great and nice. But that's not true. Because I know there's a serpent in the garden. I can't go around the world and say, you know, let me go take care of all the serpents and get rid of them. That way you'll be perfectly safe. Because there's serpents in the garden. That's why it is, man. And you guys will, I don't know, any of you guys like take care of little nieces and nephews, brothers, sisters, guys? Do you worry about them in the future? You should. I don't mean that to scare you. I mean that because it's true. 
Why should you be worried about them? Because no matter how much you protect them, no matter what garden you create for them, no matter how perfect everything is that you do for them, some way, somehow, there will be a serpent in the garden. And you can't do anything about that. All you can do is prepare yourself for the serpents that you're going to encounter because you're going to encounter serpents in your life. No one can go through the world and get rid of all of the serpents. All of the things that are going to come into your life and create chaos and disorder. But what you can do is prepare yourself for the serpents when you encounter them. That's what I'm always trying to do with you guys, to prepare you for the serpents. Because the serpents are going to show up in my context. Serpents are going to show up and tell you things like, so you can eat of any tree here, huh? No, in school I learned how to closely read and how to pay attention to what people say specifically. So I know that what you're telling me right now is not true. That's a lie. But I mean, did, did, did he really say that? Was that really what the person said? Yes, I read closely and I paid attention. I woke up and I paid attention to what people said and I believed what people said. In other words, when someone tells you that they're evil, believe them. When someone tells you you're gonna do something, take their word for it first. So I know that, yeah, they said that. Um, but that's not true though. No, no, yeah, it really is. Cause I've thought about this. So I'm not easily swayed. I have, a, I have an opinion about something, but it's a deep opinion about something because I don't just have a feeling, I have a belief, I have reasons. And then therefore the serpent will not be able to shake you in that area. But there are other serpents, there are other gardens, and we're not in a garden anymore, which should tell you there's not just one serpent, <laughs> there's lots of them, man. And I hope you guys are ready because that's how you get people to be angry and hate other people. Convince them that they're the serpent. Convince them that that person over there is the devil. And it'll make sense if you don't think about it. But, man, think about it. Otherwise, you're just going to be used by mass movements.